Greetings, Earthlings! If you have ever recorded anything with a microphone, you're going to be very interested in what comes up in just about 30 seconds. I'm Planet Mitch from Planet5D.com, and we got an exclusive behind-the-scenes factory tour of Rode microphones down in Australia. Karen Gottschalk, who's a filmmaker down in Australia who writes for Planet5D.com, was invited by Rode microphones to come do a tour of their factory and find out what goes into making microphones like this one, which is the Rode video mic. I've also got the Rode NTG4, which is in camera here on purpose. It, you see it dangling there. That's not a mistake. And I'm also wearing the Rode Smart Lav, which is connected to my iPhone, which is in the pocket. Now this is a great little lav mic, which goes straight to a recorder, which is your iPhone which is pretty dadgum awesome, which I use often to make videos like this. And I've seen a lot of people using them on films and weddings and all kinds of stuff. So they've got all kinds of microphones. And if you've ever recorded anything with a microphone, you're going to be very fascinated by this. If you're interested in filmmaking and we're DSLRs or photography, we've got a lot of great news, tips, tricks, and reviews over at planet5d.com. So check us out there. And if you want five free eBooks, Come to planet5d.com slash join and we'll send you those five free ebooks and we'll send you Planet 5D in your inbox every day so you don't forget to come look for the news. It comes straight to you. Thanks to the crew at Rode, Scott and Ryan and everybody who helped us put this together. Make sure you watch all the way to the end so you find the link that'll probably be right up here to the behind the scenes. So let's go see what happens down the road. Get the pun down the road at the Road Factory down in Australia. Thanks a lot. So I understand this machine is an interesting one. It does some interesting functions. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Or? What it does is it actually gets the back plates of our capsules to within fractions of a single micron of flatness and twist. Now, by being able to get the back plate super flat, what that means is that we can have every single microphone that comes off this line completely accurate. So every one that we pick up will be perfectly matched. So this is something new to Rode, new to the realm of manufacturing microphones? Yeah, only recently in the last few months been fully functional and up and running. Um, it's now manufacturing capsules for all sorts of microphones for us, you know, like our shotgun mics, our large diaphragm mics. It was a good three years worth of blood, sweat and tears to get it running properly. We had teams coming over from Japan working on it and everything. I was going to ask you, looking at the label, is this a Japanese manufactured uh, yeah, it is. The variation of this machine was used in watch manufacturing. So that's the kind of precision that we're getting on our capsules. It's the same kind of spec that you expect out of a watch manufacturer. So mm. These are all robotic arms. They pick it up and it can run 24 hours a day. Uh, and we can set it up each afternoon and we come back the next morning and we've got tons of capsules just ready to go. This is basically what you're seeing popping out of the machine. So these holes have been drilled. This is a very, very high resistance plastic. Uh, and the idea is that that is an isolating gasket. Now, a lot of other microphone capsules, the way they're made is with a, a gasket that's just placed on top of the back plate uh, to separate the back and the front. The difference with what we're doing here is that we actually mold the gasket around the outside of the back plate. And that means that we can have it perfectly consistent every time. There's no shift in the gasket. There's no difference in the thickness. You don't accidentally bend it as you're putting it on. It's actually made into the back plate. Now this is actually a pretty special machine. It's the same machine used in the manufacture of Lego parts, which it does sound silly, but Lego is among the highest precision plastic parts um, in the world. We place all the back plates into the machine and it'll spin around. It takes about a minute to process and it'll actually injection mold the plastic around the outside and they pop out, trims them off, and then they go into a process which will then end up in the capsule cell. Even the plastics that we use are, are, are very high grade plastics and the idea is the higher the resistance of the plastic, the better the end result of the capsule because you're not going to get any possibility of the, the current transferring between the, the front plate and the back plate in any kind of undesirable way. What we're in now is the, the surface mount electronics room where we manufacture the circuit boards that go into the microphones. And what happens is we store the components in these towers here uh, and that just keeps them at the ideal temperature and humidity. And then the guys just dial in what components they need. They'll all pop out of here automatically. 
They can be placed on a rack that then goes into the next machine, which I'll show you. After they've got the components ready, you get a blank board that'll go into this machine, and this machine will screen print some solder paste onto it. So it's like a wet version of solder, so that all the components can stick to it before it goes into the oven to bake. These are the components that have come out of that storage tower over there. And what you're seeing here is where they all load through. What happens is the components are picked up really quickly. The little scanner here is like a camera and what that does is it flashes a light, checks that the components are all loaded correctly and then they go into the big circuit board pizza oven. Now what we do is we control the temperature of this the whole way through to make sure that the components are gently heated up and then never heated over their maximum uh, temperature that they can actually handle. As we go through, you can see finished boards that have, that have come out today. This is NTG4 Pluses. By keeping surface mount components, we can keep absolute precision. Every single board that comes off here is going to be identical, and every single board is tested before it goes on to the next stage. What we're looking at here is a solder flow machine, and what it's doing is actually soldering a bunch of components all at the same time. So there are some components, like larger capacitor switches, that are better off being a through-hole soldered component. As you can see here, these are, once again, podcaster boards. And what happens is they go onto this machine that goes through here, heats up the boards, and then as it gets to this part, there's like a waterfall of molten solder. It's kind of like Terminator when the guy comes out of the, the liquid metal, and, and that's actually what solders all the parts at once. I mean, we can produce tons per day. This is a SmartLav Plus cable before it's been given a capsule and before it's actually injection molded. We actually use a Kevlar reinforced cable. So you can see here, this is actually Kevlar. It's insanely strong. I mean, you could pick up you know, a, quite a weight with this cable without the cable actually snapping and, and the internals snapping. So we're using Kevlar on our lav cables on our smart lab, our pin mic, all of the miniatures. This is our laser machine, which laser engraves the serial number, where the microphone's made, and the model number. And we do all that through here. It'll go consecutive so that we can track a, a microphone throughout its lifetime and know if it ever has a problem. We can track it down specifically what it is, although that happens very rarely. That gives you a bit of an idea of exactly how we're labeling our mics. We're not screen printing them. It's not a paint it's actually lasered onto the finish so it can never come off. So what you're looking at here is our tower of power. This is where we get our valve microphones and their power supplies and we run them in for 24 hours. The one challenge is that valves uh, in the manufacturing process need to be tested and burnt in to make sure that they're going to be reliable over a long period of time. So rather than um, you know, kind of waiting until they get out there in the market and come back or whatnot, we actually test them here in-house, we burn them in and we make sure that there's no issues. What kind of qualities are you after if you buy a valve mic as opposed to... So a valve a microphone, mic. there's a thing called positive harmonic distortion. What valves do is actually introduce a little bit more of that kind of grit. Essentially what it does is it gives you a nice kind of sizzle in the top end of the microphone. It gives you a really nice warmer tone is generally how people explain it. So this is essentially the heart of a microphone. It's the piece that vibrates when it's actually touched by sound waves. That will go onto the back plate that we saw in the capsule cell. This is a machine that laser cuts each individual diaphragm out once it's been placed onto the, the mylar. So what we do, we stretch out the mylar and each ring is placed. It's tensioned to a certain uh, frequency and that'll determine what resonance the capsule itself will have. And then they come into this machine where a laser will cut them out super precise so that what you end up with is something like this where you can see there's absolutely no burring around the edges. So what you're looking at here is the capsule assembly room. It's a positive pressure room, meaning that air is always flowing outwards and the air that's drawn into the room is drawn through uh, HEPA filters. So you end up with no dust, no dirt in the room. And that's where every part of a capsule is screwed together before it then goes on to the next stage, which is soldering it to the actual board itself. And these are environmental testing chambers. So we can say simulate 10 years of usage of a microphone within a couple of weeks by changing the temperature, the humidity, and just forcing the microphone to corrode as it would over a long period of time. And then that way we can get a very good idea of the environmental protection of our microphones, how we can develop them so that they last longer. Uh, and that's how we can confidently add industry leading warranties because we know through testing each product that it will last. This little machine here is a salt spray tester, and this will mainly simulate people singing into a microphone over a long period of time. You can imagine a lot of moisture hitting a microphone. 
uh, you want to know what's going to happen to it. So this one will spray, you know, kind of warm salt spray. We're testing NT1As at the moment. And once it comes out of this machine, we'll monitor it over a period of a few months and we can see how the microphone corrodes and, and know how to combat that in the future. So this is our paint chamber. We use a ceramic paint. It's a ceramic coating that goes through this machine and it comes through and gets baked for about 20 minutes and then you end up with this really nice solid surface. We don't just spray them with a paint. We want to make sure that these microphones look like they do today 20 years from now. It's much better environmental protection for the mic and it's insane scratch resistance when you compare it to a regular paint. There's actually a, an electronic charge that's applied to the paint as it squirts out of the nozzle just before it hits the microphone. And it's, it's positively charged, the paint. And this rack, what it does is it negatively charges the bodies so that the paint actually sticks. It's actively attracted to the microphone. So that means that we get a, a much more even coverage. It also means we have much less wastage of paint. It's a much greener way to actually paint your products. What you're looking at here is a raw bar of aluminium that's being turned into a shotgun microphone body. So it goes through this lathe. So we've got five lathes running 24 hours a day, making the back plates of capsules, making the front parts of a, of a microphone, and also making the microphone bodies themselves. So this is an, a lightweight aluminium that we use on this, just simply because a lot of shotgun microphones are either on top of a rig that might be on your shoulder or on the end of a boom pole. The lighter we can make the product, the better. So we're using aluminium. And you end up with a fair amount of scrap, because as you can imagine, what we're doing is actually machining parts. It's the way that we get them so precision, they're not cast. And that's not wasted. That's sent back to the factory that made these bars for us. We sell it back to them. They turn it back into this, and it goes back into the machine again to become microphones. So, so it's a very green process. I guess so, uh, involving yeah. Involving a great deal of recycling. Yeah. yeah. So this is the road anechoic chamber. This is where we test our microphones so that we can actually check the exact response of a product without any environmental interference. So there's no reflections in the room at all. It's all completely absorbed and the room is, is dead silent. The reason for the elevated floor is that we want to be able to have our microphones when they're tested right in the very middle of the room to maximize the characteristics of it. The idea is to make it sound like we're in total free space so that there's no reflections that come back. Would you have some kind of rig in the middle of this? On the floor we actually have a suspended platform and the idea is that we'll have a microphone and a speaker uh, and we can actually rotate the microphone while the speaker outputs a frequency sweep uh, and then we can test the, the response of the microphone, whether it, we're testing the polar pattern of the mic, so the rejection characteristics of the microphone, or whether we're you know, kind of testing the actual frequency response of the microphone, what it can pick up um, at different levels when a certain uh, reference volume is sent through the mic. We can actually test that. You couldn't do that accurately in any space other than an anechoic chamber, so that's why we built our own rather than uh, relying on any other anechoic chambers for, for test work self-contained, not dependent on anyone else Absolutely. Again. And that's our motto here, I guess. We're always trying to make sure we can do whatever we can possibly do in-house, we do in-house, and then that way uh, we make sure that we have complete control over, over every stage of the, the process of making a microphone. Have specific um, microphones, new microphones, been tested in here? Oh, of course, all of our new products, even, even our existing products which have been tested in other chambers, we test in our own chamber. It's all part of the process of, of making sure that our products are coming off the line to the specifications that we want to manufacture them to. Uh, so new products like the NTR ribbon microphone, the NTG4 series mics, all the charts that you'll see online have actually been generated in this room. Right. So I guess this is a, a nice place to conclude the tour. I hope you enjoyed it and get a bit of an idea of what we do here at Rode and, and how much in-house manufacturing and, and testing we do. Mm, very impressive actually. And uh, to see that you can do it all yourself, you've developed a lot of processes that uh, may be unique, but are certain, and it's certainly very impressive in the way you, you, know, you execute them. Yeah, well, thank you. And, and you're welcome anytime. It's been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for your time. Thanks again to the folks at Road. You can find them at road.com. That's R-O-D-E dot com. Thanks also to our Planet 5D readers and subscribers to our YouTube channel. Click this link to subscribe now. And click this link to join us and get five filmmaking ebooks. Click this box in the upper right to go view the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes of the factory tour at Road. 
Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you here at planet5d.com.